Hello everyone, welcome to a new part of the series. Today we're going to have a look at creating the HUD, some menus including inventory for our project. And uh, you know, I'll be focusing on mostly the mechanics of this. I might fast forward to a couple of, you know, me rearranging things to look pretty type things. Um, as that's, you know, of no value and that's you know, it's just personal preference. Um, but I'll make sure that when it comes to every mechanical side, um, you know, every game mechanic, um, you know, we'll walk through it. So before we get started, I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support. So let's start off with the actual uh, HUD itself. Now, one of the best things um, about, um, or at least for our series about the Soul Games is, um, you know the fact that uh, you know most of them just have the same, pretty much the same HUD. Um, if you've you know played Dark Souls three and then look at Elden Ring's HUD, you if you weren't paying attention that you were looking at Elden Ring, uh, you might have thought it was just Dark Souls three. Um, maybe because you know I'm just a relatively casual player that I didn't you know notice well many differences really. Um, but that's good for our series. Um, we'll make it a lot easier. Now, when it comes to, um, I wouldn't even know what to call it, um, but let's just say the little logo that normally shows your uh, allegiance. I won't be doing anything mechanical with that, really. Um, so I'll just keep it simple. And, you know, truth be told, um, uh, you know, the allegiance is just going to be, uh, it's really difficult to see. <laughs> But it's just, you know, kind of like the logo, and that's pretty much it. So, yeah, you know, really, really simple. Nothing special. Um, you know, mechanically, I, I won't be doing much with it. So, there we go. Maybe that's even a bit too big already. Um, I think the original size was actually better, closer to, uh, to how it should be. There we go. Um, so, yeah, you know, not adding any value here. It just it kind of looks kind of cool, I guess. Um, so I'll do the alignment like this, just to make sure that when it comes to positioning, um, at least it makes sense. There we go. Um, we're going to parent this entire group with, um, um, you know, with a parent that is actually going to be aligned to the left corner, just to make sure it all stays together um, in case of, you know, something changing. So yeah, I'm just going to call this logo and I'm just going to keep it at that. Now, the important things here um, are obviously going to be all of the elements that actually do something. Um, so we'll start off with health background. Um, I made some really simple shapes in Photoshop. I'll share those in the description as well, um, just so you can follow along in case you uh, don't have anything yourself. Would obviously always advise to, you know, do something better um, yeah, pretty much. So, um, 400 by 20, um, I think that's big enough. Um, again, that is a simple personal preference. You can make it whatever size um, you want. Um, but, you know, I created my images based on that size. And I personally think this takes up more than enough space, um, you know, in the actual, uh, in the actual HUD. So we'll, uh, we'll start off with uh, the simple background. Um, I'm going my same old route of making this like semi-transparent. I, I personally just like that. Um, I'm aware that it's not what um, everyone will like, but you know, personally, I just I like it. I think it's cool. Um, this is going to have a uh, 600 by 20, uh, 400 by 20, sorry. 400 by 20 uh, border image as well. And the reason for the border is just because, well, the Souls game have like a, a light border. Um, you know, it's just kind of looks nice, I guess. Let's change the transparency a bit uh, on this. So it shouldn't be too much and make it a tiny bit darker. Yeah, it's really light, <laughs> maybe a bit too light, um, but it's okay. I'm fine with that. It's a, yeah, it's a small touch, basically, nothing else. Cool. 
Um, so the border is going to be uh, on top of everything else, uh, so something to keep in mind. So we'll need to create um, the following. Um, so image, um, again, 400 by 20, um, which will be here. Um, and this is going to be our uh, health delay. Um, I'll explain in a bit why we're doing this. Um, we're just going to use a simple square here. Um, stats examples, melee examples, both have them, so you should have them in your project as well. This needs to be filled um, because it's going to be an interactive bar and it's just going to do the traditional horizontal way. You can start a, uh, decide on the starting point, but again, most of the time this is just going to be left and, you know, it's already all set. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. I'm going to set a color for this straight away. There we go. And I'm going to test something. I'm not even sure it's going to work. I tried to create a simple emboss type, you know, like a small bevel. Um, and it's a lot smaller, the bevel, than I imagined it to be. I mean, unless I completely zoom in and you see the really small shadow here. And it's not even noticeable. So, yeah, that was totally not worth creating in Photoshop. Um, but that's okay. I don't really mind. So, um, we have the delay here. Um, and then we're going to duplicate this one uh, simply to save ourselves some time um, and just call this health bar. Um, and this is going to uh, be the regular bar. Um, so we'll need a couple of elements here. So attribute UI, uh, player health. There we go. Um, we'll drag in the health bar in uh, value fill image. And that's it. I'm not going to do anything else. I don't want to grab any color from this. Um, I don't need, um, you know, just like the Souls games, I don't need there to be an actual number text. Um, but we've done that in previous videos for the boss battle. If you want to do that, you can. Um, you know, it's pretty simple. Um, then when it comes to uh, the delay elements, um, we simply need to uh, drag in the delay in its own image and there we go and this is what creates a small delay when your health chops off uh, and yeah that's pretty much it cool so um, we have that um, it's going to be really simple to create the next ones so we'll do mana um, bg background there we go mana and uh, mana again perfect um, we'll keep the same dark tone of the colors i do like that and we'll pick this one i should have uh should have just simply copied that over sorry about that There we go. Um, if you have some lighting in your scene going on, keep in mind that simply using this on this might actually get a different result uh, depending on post-processing, lighting, etc. So it's not that reliable, just copy that hexagon color. Cool. Um, then all we need to do is just switch this to mana and uh, switch this one to mana as well, and we're done. Then um, the next up, um, duplicate again, is going to be stamina. So stamina, BG, there we go. Um, let's switch this straight away so I don't have to do it again. Um, we can select both here in terms of uh, color, if I'm right. Yeah, there we go. So we can just select both. Um, we'll go for dark green-ish. Yeah. yeah, that bevel really didn't play out uh, as I imagined it would, uh, but that's okay. Um, when it comes to the delay, again, select mana, and we're done. Um, that's all. So let's reposition these. Um, there we go. They're not the prettiest colors. Maybe I should adjust them a bit, but yeah, it's, uh, it is what it is. I'm not really noticing that 3D effect I tried to add in uh, Photoshop, but that's fine. Um, and let's uh, do it like this, and yeah, it seems out the middle. There we go. Now, ideally, I would have liked that you know, just in uh, like just in Dark Souls, um, you know, actually matched. 
maybe the the angles are a bit differently done. Cause it, yeah, it would have to be way too big. No, it's not gonna. It's not gonna cut it. Um, no, I don't like that. That's simply too big. Um, maybe the health bars are actually a bit too big. Um, no, they they seem about right to me. So yeah, maybe these corners are slightly different in the, in the soul's image, but that's okay. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for all of the basics. So let's actually have a look here. Um, make sure it's all working. Now, before we do anything, I want to parent all of these. So create empty parents. Um, shouldn't have done that. So let's drag all of these out. Let's drag that parent in exactly where I want it to be, which is here. Then we'll drag them all back in. Um, so I'm just going to call this anchor uh, elements. It's make a lot of sense, but yeah. And basically, this that way, this entire group is going to uh, be anchored in at this point. Um, you know, in case of stretching and turning of the of the ratios for different screen sizes. Cool. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Um, so let's make sure it's all working as well. Um, maximize this, turn off. Yeah, it shows that our stamina drains really fast. Uh, might want to check those values a bit, but yeah, that's uh, that's okay. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's all working. Um, now I know that in the Souls games, basically once you upgrade, these bars get longer and um, you know stretch out more to the point where once you increase your health, uh, it's just going to completely stretch like that. Personally, I always found it incredibly annoying. Um, uh, it's also you know more difficult, obviously, to set up because um, basically you're adding uh, chunks after. I've never really you know properly uh, mess around with that. Truth be told. To find out how to do it i'm also just not really not a big fan of it um i prefer when it's all just you know neatly fits um but that might be just me um but yeah if you're going to ask in the comments how can i make it just like in the soles that it completely stretches out i've i've never really tried to do that um so i'm sorry about that you know that's something you uh, you'll have to figure out for yourself um uh, to be completely honest i'm pretty sure um you know, if you're using constant values for everything, you, what you could do is resize these. Um, so basically, uh, resize um, well multiple objects. So you'd have to resize all of these. Um, so yeah, if you could just resize the parent, then everything the children would resize as well. But let's say um, this is you know one thousand. Um, you increase it by twenty, then um, you resize this by 20 on uh, one axis as well. That's the only thing I can imagine, um, you know, to work quickly just from the top of my head. Again, I haven't really tried this, but, you know, there's some resize actions. And that is one thing you could do. Just, you know, have it resize on the axis. I personally just don't like it. So that's why I never messed around with it. But again, that's up to you. Cool. Um, so we have all of the basics. Now we have a couple of other things, um, which is basically the hotbar element um, of the inventory system, which has um, you know some spells, your uh, potions, things like that. Um, we're going to leave that part of the HUD until we're done with our um, our actual menu and um, well our inventory system, um, as that plays in so we'll uh, we'll basically double dip in between those two cool so next up is going to be our um our inventory because basically when it comes to the menu it's uh you know the important part is basically just the inventory uh part here um so yeah let's have a grab at that um so in order to keep things a bit simple i know i've been asked a couple of times like can you just create um the inventory from scratch like why would I want, I don't really see why I would want to waste that time to be completely honest, because it's just the UI element with some, um, you know, scripts already pre-attached. I don't really personally see the value in just, you know, 
not using that. Um, it's a great prefab. Um, so, you know, might as well use it. I don't know. Could be me. Um, so, yeah, um, we have this, uh, this HUD here. Um, sort order one needs to be above the UI. And yeah, this is the basic. I'm not really sure if there's a difference between the between these two. Never really paid attention to that. Cool. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll just be keep using this one. Um, obviously, change the look of it. It's just going to be full screen. Um, but the nice thing here, and the reason I, I keep using this, is simply because all of the scripts are already attached. You know, it, it's just a bit simpler. Um, you know, it, it's just a HUD prefab, there's nothing else to it, uh, an inventory prefab of UI, there's nothing else to it, um, but it just makes it, you know, it saves you a lot of time by just using a prefab, so yeah, I'm not going to do it from scratch for no reason, basically. Cool. Um, I'm going to drag those out, um, as I don't really need this, uh, don't really need the parent. Um, we can add a canvas group to here. Now, if you've never used canvas group before, um, canvas group allows you to basically set the alpha and, you know, you have the fade in effect, which looks really cool. Uh, there's a default action for that as well in game creator. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just, you know, allows you to do the fade, um, which I think is pretty nice. Um, so we'll, we'll add that again. Um, when it comes to equipment, we're not going to be, um, I'll just turn it off for now, but I don't think we'll use it at all. Um, and yeah, here um, we're going to uh, turn it off. We'll just put it to, well, let's first just make it, um, center is a bit strange. There we go. Um, we're just going to be resizing this completely to be full screen. There we go. Um, we'll do stretch just in case. Um, the background, um, I think in the souls, is pretty dark. There's an image behind it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty dark, so we'll do you know, something like this blackish. Um, perfect. And then um, we'll just do square. Cool. Um, yeah, this is uh, one of the annoying things with uh, with HDRP in this sense. Cool. Um, we'll uh, we'll have a look at the look later. Um, we can always change that. Um, when it comes to the um, the menu system that is basically inside of this prefab here, um, we'll be using that slightly below, at least to you know kind of um, you know mimic uh, you know the Dark Souls HUD a bit. So when it comes to the header, um, the header contains the menu. Um, we're going to drag that out. Um, you know, I want that to be separate. Um, we'll just uh, have that here somewhere. Fine. And we're going to, um, for now, just disable the weight. I'm going to remove the close button. Um, currency, well, that's going to be our souls in this case. Um, so we'll have that, uh, you know, here. Um, takes up a pretty big chunk of the, the menu in Dark Souls. There we go. Um, this is going to be our, um, our actual inventory. So we need to resize that to about, um, yeah, about this size. There we go. So this is going to be our uh, our actual inventory. Um, this is where we have in uh, the Souls games we have a preview, um, you know, of the item, you know, stating um, what it is, what it does, things like that, um, which is you know pretty nice, I guess. And then um, here we have the stats. Now the stats is something that we'll be using as well for the, um, you know, for our original. Uh, character creation menu so we'll just be uh, copying that over um, but first now I'm just going to quickly um, fast forward as I'll take over um, 
you know, take over the UI elements I did from the character creation just to match the look. Um, you know, you can mess around with that yourself. Um, and once I have the look down to be the same as the character creation one I did before, we'll continue with the actual mechanics because, you know, look is just um, something else. Cool, so a quick edit further and we're here and I'm not going to pretend by any means that this is a pretty UI, but you know, at least it's something. Now, if you want to get rid of that annoying effect of like over lighting with the background and HDRP, just, you know, turn off the light and you can edit just fine. So yeah, it's a, it's a really small edit, nothing all too spectacular really, um, but you know, at least it fits my redesigned uh, character creation and it's just a similar team. Now in the Dark Souls UI we have you know our inventory with a big description all of that stuff then here we have some stats and then you have a separate screen with equipment um, where you can actually equip stuff. Um, in a way that's you know that's that's nice and all. Um, reality is <laughs> to be completely fair, um, you know, it's I, I find it a bit annoying. Um, it is cool in a way, and there's a couple of things I wouldn't know how to precisely replicate um, without having to change a lot of code, uh, which I'm not going to do, uh, if even if I could. Um, so we're just going to be merging those two together. So we're just going to uh, keep it really simple in that sense. Um, you know, this is design stuff, you can do whatever you like. Um, but I'm going to keep equipment and inventory just in the same window. Um, you know, just so we don't have to focus too much time on this type of thing. Um, and simply put, it actually makes things quite a bit easier to use, really. Um, as a default, uh, you know, of the, the Dark Souls game, um, even Sekiro, you know, it's, it's all pretty much... Uh, pretty much the same it's not that ideal so yes we'll be uh, we'll be using these um, you know this yet again um, so we'll have inventory and equipment just uh, just in the same screens um, we are going to change it uh, a tiny bit just so we have um, you know just so we have our weapons and um, you know um, uh, our other inventory items just in the same space so um, let's rearrange those things. So um, we have our container here with a vertical group. Um, we are going to change that to a uh, horizontal group. Um, so let's get rid of this. And let's do a horizontal layout group. There we go. Um, we have the background here, um, which is nice, but I don't need. Um, and yeah, we have our uh, we have our horizontal uh, layout group here, so that's uh, that's all fine. So what we'll do is we'll basically have a uh, have a couple of uh, of these. Uh, simply put, so this is going to be. Um, we'll start off with the weapons as well, so we'll uh, we'll only really need two. Um, one of them is going to you know you can make that the basically the icon. Um, that you know separates uh, separates things um, if you don't want to, but you don't. We don't need to do that. So in this instance, slot head is just going to be um, entirely removed. We can do an icon later, and yeah, we can just uh, keep it simple, um, simple like this. So sorry about that. So yeah, something like this. So we'll have um, we'll have our weapons here. Um, so container. Well, let's just do equipment uh, weapons. Then we'll duplicate this and we'll do um, equipment um, armor. Let's write that down. Now, when it comes to armor, I would like to have um, at least four options. Um, so let's duplicate these. Um, so we have four in total. So we'll do helmets, chest, gloves, boots. Um, I'd like to reiterate, you can have as many as you want. So just because I'm limiting it to four doesn't mean you have to. If you want to have six, eight, ten, you can just add more slots. Um, but you also need more categories to tie them to. 
So before we continue with anything else, let's actually set up those categories first. So we'll go to preferences, we'll go to types, and we have all of the usual stuff here, um, which you know is going to be the most common. I'm going to change this. So I'm going to do uh, general weapons, um, left hand and right hand. There we go. Um, and then when it comes to equipment, we'll have a helmet, um, chest. I know it's like curious or something, but I'm not sure how to spell it. I'm going to skip that for now. Um, gloves, and we'll do uh, boots. So just a couple. Um, I know you often can add waist um, as a fifth one, for example. Um, could even add a multiple for you know jewelry like rings and necklaces. Um, it's completely up to you. I'm just going to leave it at this, but you can add as many as you want. So um, we'll uh, we'll set the actual pieces up later, um, but at least we have the categories, so we can um, already tie these to these categories. Um, also going to add some different icons uh, here, you know, just to differentiate a bit, uh, just to make it easier. Um, I have a pack um, with some icons, um, not the most fitting, I'll be honest, but it's one of the ones I already had, um, and that's why I'm using them. Um, but, you know, again, you can use whatever you want. Um, it's completely up to you. So um, this is going to be, um, well, this will be, I'm going to do, yeah, this will be right hand. So when it comes to the icon, um, let's drag in a sword. There we go. Um, this is going to be um, a shield. Perfect. And then this is going to be the helmet. I'm sure it's here somewhere. We already have chest, so let's drag that in before I lose that again. Uh, chest. We have boots, um, so helmet and gauntlet should be a bit later. So we have helmet, and that means gauntlets is here. Perfect. There we go. Um, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty basic stuff. Um, now the uh, trickiest part, obviously, is going to be how do we handle items, so uh, potions, things like that. Um, how are we going to um, add that to this system? So there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, I'm going to use the hotbar, um, the hotbar prefab we have somewhere. There we go, hotbar. Um, it's in the uh, inventory examples, I think, or just the core, so make sure that's installed. Um, but yeah, the hotbar, let's do sword order two, just to have it in front for a moment. So the hotbar is going to be, uh, going to be slightly tricky, um, because you can only have one hotbar as far as I'm aware. And you know, if I'm wrong about this, I, I gladly be corrected. Um, but as far as I'm aware, you can only have one and you can't link them to each other. So the hotbar you basically see in your HUD has to be the exact same item we see here in our inventory. And um, in my easy template kit, I had a, a trick for that, which is the same trick we'll be using uh, this time around as well. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's worth keeping in mind. I'm going to uh, start that process now. So I'll have uh, four items um, just like um, just like with this and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to duplicate um, equipment armor and I'm going to do equipment items um, drag that below um, again this is not about design because this is not pretty <laughs> um, going to check how big these are so they're 150 by 150 and I'm going to get rid of them and make sure to do that in the item one, not the armor one. I'm going to get rid of them. And I'm going to drag these in 
to that container. You got rid of the hotbar altogether. I don't think there's any special script on the parents. Nope. Um, then these have to be 150 by 150, just like the other ones. And there we go. Now the style matches. Um, let's replace those icons as well, just so uh, just so it fits the theme a bit. There we go. I'm sure there has to be a couple of potions here. Yeah, there we go. Um, I don't really mind which one it is. Cool. So the hotbar items are slightly different. So when we inspect um, one of these objects, we'll see there for one, they're tied to a key code, um, which is pretty cool. Um, you can change that to whatever. Um, you can, I'm pretty sure you can also just have none. Um, but I like using the alphas on, on PC. I think that's a good approach. So pressing them will consume them, which is you know pretty cool. Um, the other thing is that we have amounts. So it actually indicates how many we're dragging in. I'm going to keep that um, as I think that's actually really useful, uh, seeing the amounts, um, you know, it's quite necessary even. Um, so I do like that. Now the problem is, is how am I going to get this in my um, HUD as well, considering, well, it can't look like this, for example. So it can't just be on the middle of the screen. So it needs to be, uh, placed elsewhere, but not just placed elsewhere. It also needs to have a different parent because right now um, it's a child of inventory. So yeah, that's that's slightly um, you know slightly problematic in a way. Um, luckily, you know we can obviously just like with everything else, we'll have solutions for that. Um, I'm going to center these um, and um, before continuing with the inventory. I'm going to address this just so we have it out of the way. So first things first, let's create a trigger that actually opens up our inventory. And not only will it do the inventory, it's also going to manage um, this object. So uh, on start, um, we'll need that. For now, I'll leave it empty, but you'll see in a bit why we'll need that. I'm going to do another trigger, uh, which is key down. I'm going to use I for inventory and we'll need some conditions and some more conditions. <laughs> so we'll have two sets of conditions. So let's call these conditions um, open close and conditions. Um, let's just do a hot bar. No confusion there what it does. Cool. Um, so what we're going to do open close is just a really basic, um, so active, um, if this object is active, which is inventory, um, well, not active, then we're going to set it active once we press that button. And then we add another clause, um, you know, doing the opposite. Cool. Um, we can keep this in the same conditions. I just prefer to have um, separate. Um, so I'm going to copy over this one. There we go. And this is all going to be about uh, placement. So what are we going to do with uh, the placement? So we're going to use a transform action here. So transform uh, game object. Um, equipment items, change parent, and uh, we're first going to address, you know, if it needs to move to the um, to the inventory. So, parent is going to be uh, this, and then when it comes to position, we already have that information. That's why. It <coughs> That's why it's just easier to do that first. Um, so this will be a local position. Um, we need to do scale as well. That is quite important because with UIs moving in and out, often scale changes. Um, so it's better to just fix that. So important scale right now is one, one, one. That is really important. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, snip of um, the position here. And I'll keep this on my second screen so I can actually um, 
you know uh, check this uh, displacement um, the easiest way if it's allowing me to drag it over and then I'm going to copy those in the um, in here so well this is my placements uh, yours could be different of course if you place it slightly differently zero and scale is all uh, one cool then we need to know um, where we would put this um, in our HUD so I'm going to um, for now I'm going to close this I'm going to turn on uh, the light again behind us uh, just to make it slightly uh, easier and then in our HUD um, well I already created it but let's uh, <laughs> Let's remove that and do that again. So create an empty, um, and this will be parent uh, item. And the reason I call that parent item is because this is what the, it will be parented to. And I'm going to align that with the object above, and it's also going to be at the 120. Um, oh, there we go, 120. <laughs> and yeah, it, it might not be the, you know, the prettiest UI but at least it's you know consistent in that sense and then this will be uh, a child of this object and by default it would be placed here and we don't want that um, but I also don't want it to be this big it's way too big takes up way too much space so I want to scale it down to um, to about this um, we don't actually need to click on it I think that's you know quite key here um, you know we can just use the alphas but we need to see where it is if you want to do more than just this and you want to even change the way it looks just add that to the same conditions um, you know movement of individual items whatever you want um, but yeah just add it to the same set of actions we have here so i want it here um, i think this is good it's small enough that it's not obtrusive but at least big enough so we can still see it so i'll do the same thing i'll take a snip of the new location there we go. Um, I have that on my second screen, and I'm going to um, remove these now because you know this was a duplicate just to test where it should be. Um, but I don't want uh, I don't want to have an actual duplicate because we are going to move this same object around. So um, we're going to go back to our conditions here, and then we're going to add a new clause. There we go. Um, so if inventory is closed then we're going to change the parent yet again and this time the parent is going to be the new parent item um, scale really important 0 0.5 0 0.5 and then uh, positioning um, is actually really simple for this one uh, for me anyway um, but you know whatever you had is in terms of position just place it there uh, again, keep in mind, um, you know, it's it's just about this wherever you place it. Cool. So save. Then what we're going to do as well is um, we have this trigger and we're going to drag those hotbar conditions um, in the on start. And that's the reason why I have them separate um, so we can call those same conditions. Cool. Now let's make sure this actually works in play mode as well. So I'm going to hit play. There we go. And as you can see, this didn't work. So um, it's still placed here. So we need to inspect that. So I'm going to press inventory. Yeah, it's not working. And the reason for that is that it's basically just doing the opposite of what it's supposed to do. So easy, qu quick fix to check this is to um, go to our conditions. Um, there we go and yeah just turn this around there we go and as you can see now it works so I yeah I had to change them around so um, we have the same objects basically in both so both in the inventory as in um, you know the HUD we have the same objects they look different they're placed differently um, but they have to be the same for this to work Cool. Um, I'm going to test this one more time just to make sure it also works on start because obviously that is quite important. So let's save this and let's try that again. Cool.
Cool. And now on start, it's working. Um, yeah, we open up the inventory <coughs> and we're all good. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. And yeah, that's uh, that's perfect. Cool. So we've got that functioning, um, which is you know kind of one of the biggest things um, from a mechanical point of view we had to do. Um, now comes the easy part is all of the stats. Um, it's actually quite easy to do because we already set up all of the stats, um, and that's you know that's the most amount of work um, setting them up, setting them up. Um, and now all we have to do is basically display them. So um, I'm going to add a different panel here, uh, UI panel. And the reason I want this to be a panel is because I am going to be reusing this. So if you remember the character creation screen we had, um, yeah, let's stick it like this. So in the character creation screen, um, no backgrounds, none. There we go. And yeah, I don't even want an alpha. Perfect. Um, in the character creation screen in the Souls games, you also have some stats that are visible, and we want to have that um, as well. So that's why this is a different panel, and then we can copy paste it basically um, over to the other scene. We'll need to make a few adjustments for it to work. Um, but that's pretty much it. So we're going to be displaying, um, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of stats here. So let's call this panel stats. Let's create a uh, text item. Um, I think in Dark Souls it's player status. Um, which kind of makes sense, but just never seen that in an auto game before. Uh, there you go. Yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense. Cool. Um, we'll start off with um, the easy one, of course, which is going to be um, which is going to be level, and I won't um, show you know show you how I'm going through all of them. Um, I'll show you how to do uh, a couple of the normal stats, and then separately we'll do uh, some some of the less straightforward ones. Um, but yeah, so level, um, I don't know, twenty four is that big enough? Can be bigger, thirty. Why not? Perfect. Then I'm um, going to duplicate that. Um, make it a child. Now I'm going to drag that um, here. It's going to be the other side. Um, that's a bit too much. This should work. I'm going to bold this one just to differentiate a tiny bit. And yeah, I'll, uh, I'll remove the stats and then um, we're going to add an attribute. Uh, no, a statue I, sorry about that. Statue I uh, player and then uh, level and we'll drag that in uh, value. There we go. Then going to duplicate that, drag it down, um, vitality, vitality, oh. and then here all we have to do is just select vitality, and we're done as well. Now um, for testing, I did remove um, one of the variable inputs, um, which I think was this one, yeah. So, uh, night, <coughs> there we go. Perfect. And if I hit play now, um, it should be picking up those stats we, uh, we set up before. So hopefully this is all going to function just fine. 
for some <laughs> for some reason uh, placement of this one is off now. Uh, oh yeah, I moved him a bit to the side. Of course, I should have thought of that um, beforehand. Um, I'll I'll fix that in uh, two seconds. But yeah, so basically level vitality. That's all what we had uh, tied to the knights class. Um, so that's per working perfectly fine. Um, uh, let's have a look. What is the new um, position on X? I think I only changed X. Um, no, nope. I also changed. Um, seems that I also changed um, the Y position. Cool, there we go, all fixed. So yeah, that's basically how it works. Um, so what you'll do is, um, you know, we created a bunch of stats and just go through, you know, through this list. Uh, I wouldn't do next level um, here in the stats uh, value. Um, you know, we can do experience, um, can do experience being souls, so still undecided on that, but we can just go through uh, through this list basically and um, yeah so just you know duplicate drag down rename and select the different stat from the drop down i'm going to save you some time by uh, watching this so pause the video and um, you know i'll fast forward to that moment cool so we've got that list now of all of the basic stats um, let's do some of the other ones we can add so um, one of them being uh, poise, for example. So poise is um, one of the stats that um, Dark Souls has as well. We do have that in our melee module, so, you know, why not? Um, so poise. Then we can remove this. And um, let's add it here. So um, character melee UI, there we go. So again, player, um, we'll drag in poise, um, current value or max value. Yeah, I'm not sure which one we should do. I think we'll do um, neck max value. Yeah, it makes more sense. Cool. Um, then we also have defense. Uh, defense. Cool. So panel stats, uh, max value for defense, there we go. And we have um, one more, um, which is um, weight, or yeah, weight, there we go, um, weight, I think I actually accidentally um, deleted the old one, but that's okay. Um, and it's weight here. There we go. And we'll track that in. Cool. So yeah, we basically have it all now. So I'm going to hit play and let's have a look. And I think this list should be pretty much, pretty much complete. So we have all of our stats here, and you know that's that's correct. I mean, those are our stats. So um, yeah, pretty cool, pretty awesome. Now the important thing is, you know, we have this in our inventory now, but we want to make sure this is also available in our character selection. So let's get out of that. So what we'll do is we'll copy this. And one of the on yeah, we'll copy the on start trigger as well that has the class conditions. There we go. Um, let's switch scene. Let's go to um, 
yeah, this is my uh, redone UI one. Um, slightly better, not that much. Just looks prettier. Still not pretty, <laughs> but it looks prettier at least. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste these, uh, yeah, paste these in. Um, for now, we'll we'll leave it. Um, we're gonna go to our character mail here. Um, let's switch out of 2D mode. Because um, what we need, and let's make sure he fits on the plane as well. There we go. Uh, what we're going to need to do is um, add a player. Because these stats are actually tied to the player character. Meaning, without a player, um, stats won't show up. We don't need to do anything. Uh, he doesn't need a model. He's, he won't be visible. Um, which also means he can't be controllable. Make sure to turn that off. Um, he will be out of sight. Um, he's literally just there to make sure um, the stats are working. So, you know, he's just there for uh, for that reason alone. And that's it. We can go back to our canvas here. Um, he's actually visible. Uh, let's see if he's visible once I hit play after. Otherwise, I'll move him a bit. Um, but yeah, cool. So then next up, um, what we need to do is we need to um, check this uh, this on star trigger. Um, we need to get rid of everything that has anything to do with um, well nothing to do with class. So we only need class conditions, and we're going to change this um, trigger to a variable change um, of the class global variable. Um, then what we need to do next is we need to make sure that um, by default, um, that's something I already did before, um, this has to be something else. I'm literally typing empty, uh, which is unnecessary, but just feels a bit safer. Um, there we go. Save. And um, what we're going to do is we're, uh, I'm going to add this panel stats to panel character. Go. Nice. Um, let's make this a bit smaller. I mean, this is personal, but I just don't think it has to be that big. Um, yeah, we'll remove this one. Um, we'll remove poise, defense, weight, because they, they have no reason of being there. Um, yeah. That's it. Um, I'm going to move level down as well, just so it's all grouped together um, for at least for this part. And we're done. Now, the important part, obviously, is making sure this only appears once we actually select a class. So if no class is selected, we don't want this to be visible. Meaning, by default, we'll just uh, disable it. Um, and I'm going to add... Um, can add the trigger here, really. Um, so trigger uh, on, yeah, sure. Hmm. We'll do another just variable changed. Um, actually, we don't need another trigger. Sorry about that. We can just add another condition. There we go. Um, so uh, class. Um, so string uh, class, uh, if it's equal to empty, the default, which I set, then um, set active um, panel stats is turned off. Um, anything else, it's turned on. So yeah, basically, once this variable changes to anything other than um, you know this non-existent class value, um, it will become, uh, it will turn on. I think that's it. Could be wrong, but I think we're pretty much done with that. So let's have a look. And there we go. So yeah, no, the little guy is invisible. So that's good. If I change camera, no, no, he remains invisible. Cool. So once we select class, uh, I'm going to do a uh, night and then suddenly we have stats. Now the only problem is is that um, the stats are empty, and that's because 
I added a player character without a stats component. Sorry about that. So stats components, there we go. File, let's uh, let's do that again. There we go. So let's have a look now. Select class, knights, and yay, we have our stats. Um, if we change this to uh, assassin, um, th this should be updating. Um, oh yeah, it's updating. Okay, I was just not paying attention. Um, there we go. Okay, they're all good. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. So now we have our uh, our stats working as well. Um, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty awesome stuff. So you know that makes this uh, a lot more complete. Now, obviously, the last thing to do um, would be uh, the actual inventory items. Uh, which, you know, it's kind of important. So I'm going to go back to preferences now and I'm going to select night again so that in the other scene we can actually test um, because that's the reason why I did that in the first place. Uh, so we can actually test some things out um, because now it's time to add some inventory items to this uh, process. So when it comes to handling the inventory and the way items are applied, there's a couple of ways to do it. Obviously, we have the prefab where you can turn everything on and off with a bunch of actions conditions, which is quite annoying to do. So what you do is you basically create a duplicate of your prefab. So if you're doing, you know, I'm only going to do one now to show how it works because otherwise it's too much, uh, takes too much time to set up in this video. Um, you create a duplicate of your prefab that has all of those attachments. So I'll use this one. Um, and then basically, you know, it's a duplicate, so everything is on there. Um, on the original one, I removed uh, everything that wasn't uh, in use. So sorry, um, I removed everything that wasn't in use. So I only had the trousers, I didn't have anything else. Um, so yeah, you know, that's, that's it. Um, so I'll keep, um, you know, I'll take the prefab and let's go back to our scene. Let's turn that lighting back on. Let's go to our player. Um, can uh, we can close the uh, the inventory right now? So dragging that copy of the prefab, which is you know obviously just going to be the exact same one, and um, let's drag that down. Um, I'm going to unpack this. Uh, going to remove the body. Going to remove the hair. Going to remove these unstart things. Um, keep the bones. That that is important. And then basically we have um, you know all of all of this going on. So this uh, again, this is just one of the ways to do it. You don't have to do it like this. I'm not going to be using all of these again. Um, the blend shapes and stuff like that. Again, you can still keep that on there if you want to do that for the clothes as well. I don't. So I'm just going to remove them. Perfect. And keep the animator, keep the bones, keep this. Um, and then we have the wardrobe basically with all of the different options. So say for example, and again, I'm just going to do one which didn't he have a belt or something? Yeah, there is a belt. There we go. So that's a belt. I want that to be an object um, together with, um, this has to be the chest. So we'll make this the chest. I have no idea which ones are going to be chests. Uh, it doesn't really matter all that much, but let's see. Um, yeah, I have, no, I have no clue. I'm just going to turn this all on and see which one actually covered the chest. None of these do. Okay, that's that's cool. We can take that all out. Is there actually anything that covers the chest? Yes. Okay, so we have this one for the chest. Um, should actually, I, I don't like that much. I like this one. don't like this one. We have this one as well. Okay, so I'll keep this as the chess piece, basically. So this will be our chess piece. So, um, Spalder, is that it? No. 
pauldron. Okay, so this will be our uh, my chest piece. He and again, uh, you can do whatever you want. Um, yeah, we'll turn everything else um, off. Turn everything else off. Okay, we'll we'll uh, we'll add. That. No, it doesn't fit. Cool. So yeah, this is going to be my chest piece. Not the prettiest one. It doesn't really matter. Now, before I remove everything else, I'm going to create a duplicate just to make sure I still have the rest, so I don't have to repeat that process again. Um, remove everything else, delete, um, call this, um, what is it, pauldron chest, cool. Um, this will become a prefab, and, okay, cool. Then, basically what you'll need to do for the rest of the pieces is just literally repeat the process now like i said i'm not going to do that now um so yeah basically you know i'm going to leave it as is for now then we're going to go to we're going to test this first so we'll do game creator actions um instantiate skin mesh renderer player add and we'll add our new chess piece because we need to make sure this is working first before we do anything crazy we're going to duplicate this action and have a remove now we're going to hit play mode and first we're going to test if this actually works cool so there we are now let's check these actions. I'm going to hit play here um, on the action. And as you can see, um, you know, it's working like a charm. Um, it's looking a bit goofy <laughs> with uh, just this on, but yeah, you know, it works. Um, and we have just a chest. The remove action works just fine as well. So we needed to test that before we set up an entire inventory like that. And there we go. So, you know, we have um, those sets all working. And again, this is just one of the approaches. You don't have to do this, um, but it works. Uh, and I, I do think it's fairly simple compared to a lot of the other options. So um, we already have an armor um, in the default example. So we'll actually be using this one. Um, so I call this pauldron just um, basic armor. There we go. Um, item types, make sure to first select nothing and then uh, equipment chest. <laughs> then here do the same thing, equipment chest. Um, you can add in conditions, you can add, for example, um, you know, stat value, player level, um, you know, greater or equal to five. So you can only equip this once you're at least level five. Uh, easy way to do this. Um, on equip, then invoker. Now we already had this action here. Um, so we'll just drag this in. So skin mesh renderer action on equip um, is going to remove that and we're done. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, it's a really um, easy approach to basically do this. Now keep in mind, we do have uh, some stats here as well. So I would like to add some stats to this. So the way we set it up, um, let's have a look again at those variables because it's been a while. So NPC attack basic. How were these calculated? I have no clue. Uh, I can't remember that. Values action, there we go. So, um, NPC damage basic, there we go, that's it. So we were using NPC damage was the result of NPC attack minus player defense. Um, I have to look up B defense basic and defense basic is based on resistance. Yeah, it's been a while. Okay, so um, def uh, resistance is what I want to uh, what I want to increase, so sorry about that. So I want to increase resistance once I put on the chest. Um, 
And that, again, that's one choice. I honestly can't remember if Dark Souls just gave you more health. I don't think it did. Um, but I could be wrong, but you can just add vitality if you want to. I mean, obviously, that's a choice. Um, I don't want to do that. I actually want to focus on this defense value. Um, so basically, um, increase um, resistance. So we're, that's what we're going to do. So inventory, um, pauldron chest. Uh, and by the way, for sprites, I'll, I'll link it in the description. Um, there's this uh, really pretty cheap asset. It's called uh, Rapid Icon. Um, yes, of, obviously, you can do all of this manually. But with Rapid Icon, you can basically select an entire folder full of prefabs and create icons out of them. And you can actually create the icons out of the prefabs. Um, the default angle is already great, so there's hardly any tweaking to be done and you get great results. Um, I would definitely recommend it. I use it for my own game because it just saves me so much time for, um, you know, for creating inventory items. And I do prefer them being based on prefabs um, because those are the actual items I'm using. Absolutely great asset. One tiny key note is you can't use it in HDRP. My own game is HDRP as well, so what I did a um, bit of a workaround, but I basically had um, a separate project just in default render pipeline, loaded in a uh, rapid icon, loaded in my prefabs um, with the models, of course, um, created the um, all of the icons, and I'm talking like 50 icons in you know five minutes, um, and just copied them over to my HDR HDRP project. It's a bit of a workaround because HDRP is not natively supported, but it really doesn't matter because all you have to do is just create an icon. So it doesn't matter if HRP is supported or not, you know, small workaround, but yeah, I would highly recommend this. Um, absolutely great little, uh, little assets, really easy to use as well. Anyway, back to, uh, back to our thing. So let's um, go uh, stat, so change stat. Um, we're going to uh, do resistance. There we go, resistance. I have no clue what the default value was, so let's have a look um, before I do something absolutely insane. So base value, base value really 400? Let's have a look at my class. I really can't remember that, but that seems a bit, seems a bit high. Um, class conditions, um, night, yeah. Resistance, oh, set value 30, okay. I. Uh, that makes a lot more sense. So base value is 30 for the night. Um, so, you know, this is a basic item. We can add, I don't know, five. I have no clue. Um, you know, balancing is definitely not something I'll address here. Um, and then make sure to subtract that as well once you unequip it. It's really important. Otherwise, you can just equip, 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 and it will keep stacking. So, yeah. Uh, really cool. So this makes our more, um, you know, functional straight away. And because of the formulas we've set up, um, it makes it fun functional in a, in a much more interesting way than the default. Just add some vitality. Here you go. Um, this will actually impact how the damage on the player uh, works. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's a pretty cool system. I'm quite happy with that. So, yeah. Um, Yes, you could select Invoker. I'm not going to mess around with that. I just want to make sure it's uh, it's the player stats that are impacted. Cool. So um, we have that, and you know, for everything else, um, when it comes to clothes and things like that, um, I'll be honest. You know, just have some fun with it. Uh, there you go. <laughs> I'm not going to do that right now. Um, what I will do, um, and I'm going to remove everything that I'm not going to use. Um, I am going to be, uh, yeah, get rid of that, get rid of that, and get rid of that. So I am going to be setting up uh, the potion, the sword, and the shield. Um, and that means we will change the way uh, it works now by default. So by default, we just have uh, the model of the sword uh, attached to the melee weapon uh, game object. Uh, which we won't be doing, we'll be managing that through inventory. A um, couple of reasons. Uh, for one, you can just have tons more weapons uh, that use the same animations. Most games do this. Um, 
I mean, you know, shooters for <laughs> definitely do this, obviously. Um, but even Skyrim, I mean, you have like 20 different swords. Most of them just are, this, you know, 200 different swords. I mean, uh, most of them are just literally the same animations. So uh, this is an easy way. And obviously you will have classes of different types of weapons. Um, but this is an easy way to have a lot of weapons um, without having to do too much work so you will basically just be using the same melee weapon game object um, but with a different um, model and that's pretty much it so that's what we're going to do here as well and the reason for that is um, because it also adds some other benefits so remember when we did that switch animation and just for a small second the sword disappeared um, that's because we're actually removing the sword um, game uh, the sword model um, and we don't have to do that which is you know pretty cool um, so yeah let's uh, let's have a look so we'll start off with the sword um, and we'll need to make sure it's the same model of course so let's also do that um, so combat knight sword one there we go. I'm pretty sure the model was all set to zero except for this 90, um, which is going to help us. I'm not going to remove this one yet. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this here, um, prefab variant, uh, just for testing purposes. Um, and the only thing here is that. So cool, let's turn this off so it has no model now. Um, we'll go back. And then what we're going to do here, um, Again, make sure these item types are correct. Weapons, uh, right hand. Um, yeah, equip on right hand. On equip, attach from right hand. That's also correct. So we'll drag in our sword variant. Um, all of this will be zero. The only thing was one rotation value was 90. Um, and I hope I did the right one, but we'll find out soon enough. Um, and on on equip, um, we're going to remove it. And and that's it. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's um, that, that's actually all there is to it. So that should work. Um, so one of the ways to test this is um, right now we automatically draw our um, draw our sword. I have no idea where we're doing that. Um, combat, I'm pretty sure it's here. On start, conditions draw. Uh, knight, okay. So if this is a knight, then what we're going to do is we're going to add, um, add an inventory item. So we're going to add the inventory item. Um, add um, sword. Let's give a, a nice name to it. Um, basic sword, <laughs> really nice. Uh, cool. So yeah, basic sword. Um, I'm not going to, you know, you can mess around with all of these values. That's completely up to you. Um, when it comes to um, attack value, obviously you can add something here as well. So we had all of these formulas to uh, do NPC damage, um, player damage based on strength as well, which obviously um, comes from attack basic and player strength. So what I'll do, um, I'm not going to change attack basic. I think that should be a basic value, um, but we can in increase strength a bit. So we can grab that from here, that action. So we'll get, there we go. Um, then we'll do strength. Going to keep it the same, just five for now, um, which might be a bit aggressive, but that's okay. Subtract, um, and this is on the chest. I'm not really paying attention, am I? Um, so there we go. And on the unequip um, strength, and then subtract. Cool. So we'll uh, we'll increase those values a bit as well, which is really nice. Um, so in our uh, on start actions for combat. Um, we're going to add this item and um, we need to equip the item at the same time.
basic sword. Um, the type is weapons, right hand. There we go. Cool. So um, we're basically, it seems we're stuck here. So when se selecting, um, uh, selecting this, um, let's see what the error is. And there we go. Now, as you can see, the sword rotation and placement needs some fixing. Now, if you were getting some errors and it wasn't working for you, um, make sure that um, if you have a recipe, it actually references to some objects. Otherwise, it just won't work. Um, so we'll need to fix that positioning a tiny bit, um, as that is, you know, wrong. There we go. So yeah, it actually seems like it'll. Uh, I made a, a small error in my uh, in my thought process. Let's go back to combat knight um, sword, and I think it should actually be um, be copying over this and then maybe add that ninety. Let's uh, let's try that. So I'm going to copy these uh, transforms, put them on my second screen. Um, and I might be completely wrong here and otherwise I'll just adjust it manually, uh, which I hope I won't have to do. Um, so 0 0.08297231 minus, there we go. Perfect. Um, and then, yeah, for rotation, um, there were already values to this. So I'm doing a stab here. Um, 893. And add that 90, and maybe that'll maybe work. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Maybe my thought process is entirely wrong here. Um, but we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, and that's uh, that was actually correct. So that's a perfect fit. Cool. Um, so yeah, really, uh, really nice. Um, that's all working. Now, the, obviously, this is one one of the nice things here is when we switch, and we'll have to do something for the uh, for the shield still. Um, but as you can see, for the sword, it's uh, it's just perfect. Um, there's no changing when we're changing styles. Um, which is, you know, really, really cool. Um, but we, you know, we should actually have an action to make sure that um, we get that uh, shield on the back as well. So we'll have to do the same for shield. Um, so there we go. And we're going to take a different approach. So um, what we're going to do is basic sword on equip. What we're going to do is we're going to be drawing that weapon. So this will be the change. So basically, we're going to do it uh, the other way around. So we're going to add um, this and on on equip. We're going to be doing this. Um, so that should be uh, sheath. Perfect. Then we'll remove this. And basically, we just switched it around. So the idea here is that by switching it around, um, you know, everything is managed through the inventory. So um, drawing and, you know, drawing a certain weapon managed through the inventory. And um, 
you know, this actual weapon that we're using, so it's the um, player weapon knight, I think, the sword 01, um, is going to be tied to certain inventory items, and the basic sword being just one of them. So, you know, we can have, um, you know, a steel sword, uh, whatever, um, and you can use the same animation types and the same combos. Um, but, you know, for that one, we basically can add a different model and we can have strengths, um, you know, we can have strength being uh, 10, for example. So, yeah, so it's all managed through the inventory now. Um, switch that, you know, that, that, looks, that looks really cool. Um, so we still have to think of something for the, for the switch as well, managed through the inventory and the shield. And once we've done that, we're going to do a potion and we're going to uh, make sure, and just for the one time, um, that for the claw select, um, you know, armor is impacted as well, just like it is in the Souls games. So the first step is going to be, um, you know, altering the way um, we display the shield. So we have to go to our um, shield object and um, the important thing here is definitely going to be take that snipping tool, um, you know, copy over uh, those positions uh, that we had. Um, I'm putting in them on my second screen because um, we need this positioning to be the same. And then with the actual model, um, you know, it's, it's going to be set to none and, you know, we're done. So then we need to make sure that when we go to the um, inventory item and we have our shield um, let's select this to the right class for one so this is uh, weapons uh, left hand um, item types nothing and then um, left hand and then on equip um, I already selected uh, selected mine so we have shield and then we have um, we have these values, so X, Y, Z, and rotation. So um, this is the same, uh, these are the same values as we, uh, as we had in the original shield object. So we still have a shield, it just doesn't have a model um, on a technical level for the um, melee uh, object. And um, on unattach, you know, we, we, uh, unequip, we remove it. Now the important part here is that um, when we go to a basic sword, I want everything to basically be handled through the um, through uh, the inventory module. So I'm going to duplicate this one. I'm going to select shield, then uh, general uh, equipment le uh, weapons left hand, and on equip um, we ha set up all these values. I'm going to add um, equip item. Uh, shield, um, there we go, so we're going to uh, add this as well, I don't think the order matters all that much, and on unequip, we're going to unequip, uh, the shield, so again, all of that is handled um, through the actual um, inventory module. Now, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, basic, that's basically it. So then uh, the next steps, obviously, um, on our actions here is we need to make sure we have the shield as well added to the inventory. Um, that's for one, of course. Um, then um, we're good here, actually. So everything should be set. So let's actually try this out. And remember, um, you know, we did remove it um, from uh, the melee object. So every model we see now is actually handled by the inventory module, um, which is the goal, of course, that's what we wanted to do. Um, I have my gizmos turned on, let me turn those off, cool. Now, what we want to do next is obviously uh, the stances. Um, we want that to uh, 
<laughs> to look good, uh, which right now it really doesn't. It just looks uh, clumsy unless we're in distance. And luckily that's that's pretty easy to do. So the first thing we're going to do is let's open up those preferences because um, we'll be uh, we'll be using a couple of things here. So um, we're going to the conditions, um, you know, stances, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to um, execute actions. Let's drag that in. Make sure it's before the weight. Um, incredibly important that we do that. Just want to highlight that. Um, cool. Then um, what we'll do next is we'll create some new actions. And I'm, I am going to name these um, just to avoid any, uh, any confusion. So uh, attach spine. And we can duplicate. Well, I'll duplicate it after. So we'll uh, we'll start off with that. And the idea here, um, obviously, is going to be, um, you know, making sure that we attach it properly to the back of the character. Now we need some weight for that as well. So I'm going to start off with a weight, and that's why it is incredibly important to not do weight till finish. These need to be executed simultaneously. Otherwise, um, well, it won't work. I mean, it will work, but it just won't look good. I tried this out. So again, with the this set of animations, um, you know, it's going to be 0 0.40, uh, 45 of weight. Then we're going to do an attach action. Um, obviously, uh, player, um, upper chest, um, which just works best, by the way, um, just to be absolutely uh, clear here. Um, it, it just works the best. Um, with movement and then we're going to uh, well you know I'm going to add these values again because I already tried this out I just want to be clear about that um, so I already uh, gave this a go and these values work for me I'm not saying this is perfect placement um, you know it might not be um, but when I tested it out this uh, this works for me so you can copy that over or you can just um, you know try out for yourself make up your own um, see what's with fits best for you and your uh, character. It's not so much about that, it's about the actions you're doing. Then we're going to remove um, from left hand. There we go. Now I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to re uh, rename this to uh, attach left hand. Perfect. Um, so we have attached left hand. Um, and with the uh, attach uh, left hand, um, and I don't know why I just closed this, that was the entire reason why I got this open. Um, we're going to copy over this action, um, going to paste that in, um, and we need to make sure that we select player, not invoker in this case. And then here, we're going to remove upper chest. Cool. Now let's drag those, um, let's drag those actions in. Um, so we have uh, spine and we have left hands. Let's make sure, let's hope I did the order right. Um, and let's try this out. So um, we press F to switch stance. Um, it puts it, the shield on his back um, and we grab it back. And I'm not going to pin this as perfect, but it's pretty good. It's it's definitely pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually quite happy with that. Um, yeah, it's a it's pretty good placement. And um, obviously, this doesn't change anything mechanically. This is just looks. Um, these meshes don't even have colliders. This is literally about the looks because the actual melee um, module objects is handling. Um, you know, is obviously handling the actual. Um, you know, blocking and, and shield components. So let's be, you know, let's be clear about that. Now, what I would like to add um, is one condition. And again, there is a limitation to doing this, um, but it avoids some, you know, graphical glitches. So for example, if I press uh, melee now and I press F at the same time, um, we're left with this weird situation where we're, um, as you can see, we are blocking, uh, but we don't have the model. So um, that's something I would like to um, would like to avoid. So what I'll do is I'll add a condition: um, is character attacking? 
um, and then not attacking on both of these. Meaning uh, we can't do it during a, uh, a melee attack. Um, we'll hit play again. Um, yeah, and basically what we'll uh, what we'll find out is that um, it, it's a small, you know, it's a small impairment on a um, you know in a gameplay manner. And let's turn off those gizmos again. Um, I can walk and I can still do this, and it will just um, you know put me to stand still, which is all perfect. Um, but if I attack and press F, nothing happens, um, and then I can do it. I think it makes more sense. Um, it's a bit weird to be changing stances during a melee attack animation. Um, doesn't actually make a lot of sense, so I do think this uh, this is a good limitation to do. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm fairly happy with that actually. Cool. So uh, now that we've done that, um, we're going to head over to um, to our last piece basically. Um, which is going to be on uh, inventory items, which is going to be a potion. Now, here's a question. Do we actually need to change anything from the default? Not really. Um, the default actually does uh, does everything it should be doing. Um, I, I think the... Uh, yeah, I, th I think the only thing I would like to... Uh, would like to change here is that it actually does something. So it says heals any wounds. Um, it's, a, it's a bit much, isn't it? So um, let's say um, heals, I don't know, 25% of health, you know, something like that. Um, and all we really have to do is just do, uh, um, oh, that's the wrong one, of course. Um, change attributes, player, health, add, um, can't remember how much our default health was. I think it's a thousand or something like that. Um, and we'll add, uh, you know, so 250. Um, I could be wrong, but yeah, something like that. Um, and, and that's it, really. Um, obviously, you can change the, um, you know, you can change whatever you want in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of uh, looks and things like that. Um, I'm pretty fine with it. Um, obviously, we do want to test this, so we're going to add a potion. Uh, let's add two. Um, let's hit play. Now, one of the things we need to do as well to properly do this, um, when we head over to our um, inventory uh, UI, um, so let's have a second look at that. Um, we do need to make sure that the filters are correct, obviously. Let's turn off the lighting again. Um, so we have, um, you know, two buttons here, and you can add as many buttons as you want, obviously. Um, but, uh, I think, oh yeah, it's the HUD that has a higher priority. I was, I was thinking already, like, why is, won't it let me select this, but it's still not letting me do that. Um, there we go. Uh, oh, maybe that's because Gizmos is turned off. That's not that smart. Cool. Um, so we have tab sorts, um, and that's the thing. So what does it do? Um, you know, it allows us to uh, change the list types. Um, it does general weapons left hand. Um, I don't want the left-handed weapons to be displayed at all. Um, we have that item, but it should be only displaying the actual sword because um, the shield comes with the sword. Um, so we're only displaying the sword here, nothing else. Um, on this one, um, general potions, yeah, we're, we're good there. Um, we can add another, and it does make me realize that, uh, you know, we need to move it a bit, but that's fine. Um, we can add another here. Um, let's realign. There we go. Um, this should be armor. Um, let's find an icon that would fit. Uh, I have no idea. Um, I, I think we already used the chest one a couple of times, but um, you know what? It's it's not about the looks right now. It's fine. We'll just use chest again. Um, 
So uh, this one, what it will do, um, it will simply um, show all equipment. So right hand. Not sure why I have to select that multiple times. It's not registering. Um, that's a bit strange. Okay, cool. Um, so there we go, and then we uh, then we have the you know a couple of the categories. Um, we should be good, I think. Maybe I'm missing something. Um, but yeah, we I think we should be good. So let's give this a go. Cool. Um, so we have, um, and I forgot to change the category. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we, we have these categories. Um, obviously, um, we can't see the, the, the shields. Um, we can't see the armor yet. So we'll need to change that and we'll need to, uh, we'll need to address this. So let's do that straight away. Um, all small tweaks. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, so let's go to equipment. Let's actually have a look first. Did, did I actually do anything wrong here? So weapons, left hand, weapons, left hand. Um, chest, chest. No, I, th I think we're pretty good. Um, yeah, we should be good. So let's have a look um, at what this does. Ah, okay, there we go. So equipment, um, this helmet, um, equipment, chest, um, equipment, gloves, and uh, equipment, boots. There we go. Um, with the uh, with the on start here, let's let's add the armor uh, we created as well, so we can actually try everything out. I think that's uh, that's a better approach. Perfect, and then we can try everything. Basically, the uh, the inventory head. Cool. Um, we'll open up the inventory, and I, I see I, I dis disabled the HUD. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we have uh, our shield and a sword equipped. So if I unequip this, it will automatically unequip um, the shield as well. Um, we see our stats increase, so strength increases the moment we uh, actually equip the weapon, um, which I think is pretty cool. Then when we go to, uh, obviously, uh, not a great uh, picture, but yeah, when we equip this, um, I think we should be seeing something increase as well. Can't remember what. Oh yeah, resistance goes up. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, we have the potions, so I'm going to drag that um, here. Um, obviously, you can change the hover over. Um, I'm not actually a big fan of the hover over at all. Um, so I would actually disable that. If you want to disable that, um, which yeah, I think I'll <laughs> I will do. Um, all you really need to do is um, go to those slots. Where are they? Uh, container items. No. Where is it? I can't. I can't find it. Ah, equipment items. Um, yeah, on the hot bars um, with the extra, just remove the extras, um, or just remove the actions that um, on hover over. You see those in, that information. Um, I'm I'm not a big fan of of this, but that's that's a personal thing. Cool. Um, we go back to our uh, inventory. Obviously, we have them here as well, um, which is nice. Um, you know, we have our item here and then, you know, we press one and, you know, it heals us. We're full health, but yeah, it heals us. Um, and yeah, you know, we have our um, pretty cool, um, well, it's not that cool actually, but we have our armor, uh, which is, you know, uh, it, it's something at least. Uh, so we have our armor, we have our shield. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I really like this, you know, the changing stances, um, you know, having that reattach and uh, the shield to the back. Um, carrying this around. I, I do think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm quite happy uh, happy with the way that looks. Um, I think it's uh, it's not bad whatsoever. So yeah, 
uh, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Now the next thing for us to do is go to that um, that other scene we have with character creation. So I'm going to use the redone one, um, as it's just prettier. Um, and basically, we need to. Uh, this is so weird when this happens. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. Um, let's turn off that. Uh, turn off that light. Um, so what we need to add is that when you select a class, um, it will actually equip something on that character. Um, and you know, there are several ways we can uh, we can do that. I think the easiest way is to um, obviously do it based on our uh, class details panel. Um, you know, I think that's the easiest way. Maybe, maybe not, but let's have a look. Um, so we have this button here and that does a bunch of things. Um, and what we can do is we can basically, um, just for ease to not make this too complicated and we can basically copy paste a couple of times and just do an execute actions. Um, so execute actions and then um, I'll, I'll even put them here um, just to have them separate. Um, actions. Uh, equip knight, something like that. Um, then we do item. Um, so that's that's one of the things we, we will do here. Is um, we're basically going to give everything the player has at this point as well. So I want him to de by default start with um, two potions, for example. Um, then I want him to have a basic sword, uh, just the one. Uh, let's not exaggerate. I want him to have the basic shield. Um, and I want him to have the chest pauldron. Uh, and that's it. So then in the actual game mode, uh, in that scene, we we'll, uh, we can remove those. So, you know, as this is the first scene, for testing purposes, I'm going to leave those actions in, obviously, as I'm not going to go back to the screen every single time just to test it out. However, once we've done this, um, you can remove those on start actions that add these items to the inventory. Um, so once we've added them, we need to make sure it equips as well. And um, we can do the sword, um, you know, you, you can do whatever you want. Um, so equip item, uh, player, um, chest. There we go. Um, and this is the thing you have to keep in mind. If we're going to do... Um, if you're going to do the uh, sword and shield as well, um, that does mean that the player will need to have the melee components or the, not the player, the character that we're displaying here, needs to have the um, the uh, the melee component as well. Otherwise, because um, we're, you know, uh, equipping the melee uh, module sword as well in that action. Um, if you want to avoid that, you can literally do a duplicate. I think that's a bit much all. Um, obviously not the player. Um, I shouldn't have done that. This character male, um, you know, and character female, by the way. Um, so you do both, I think. Um, yeah, let's do, let's just do both. There we go. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we do. Um, and then for every other class you create, so for every other list, I'm obviously not going to go through them. You need to make sure as well that you remove all of these. So you basically um, create a duplicate with um, unequip knight. Um, I know this is a bit of a headache, but um, well, not the potion actually. Yeah, the potion as well. Okay, subtract, we, we just subtract everything, subtract, um, subtract, and then here um, we'll do unequip um, item, uh, game object, um, all, all of the same ones here. So, you know, character male, uh, character female, then item, um, this, and uh, item, uh, this um, and these will be your uh, unequip actions. So um, I'll show you in a bit how to uh, how to set those uh, set those up. But it's important you have both of these. Um, 
yeah, it's important you have both, and I'll, I'll show you in a bit why. So what we'll do is um, once we click, where's that button? Um, we're going to execute these. And then basically for all of the other classes you have, you have to uh, execute the actions of the unequip. Um, for, you know, for every class. So every class you create, you create the equip and the unequip. And then um, you basically create that <laughs> you basically create that action for every single um, you know for every uh, single class, and then you execute. Um, so here in Knight, we execute um, actions on equip assassin, sorcerer, and archer. That way, only one set of items is actually done. And yeah, that's that's quite important. So obviously, once we do assassin. Um, so on the button uh, assassin, um, we will make sure that um, you know execute. Um, we do the unequip once, and theoretically this should work. Um, so let's <laughs> let's hope it does. Um, let's hope it actually does work. Um, that, would, that would be nice. Cool. Um, so yeah, class. I think class details was just it. That can be turned off. There we go. So let's have a look. Let's see if this actually works, um, which it won't, because I completely forgot to add the melee component. Uh, so let's turn that off first. Um, so melee, character melee, and um, player. Well, no, we don't need the equipment, do we? I don't think we need the equipment. Yeah, we'll we'll have a look. I might be uh, I might be oversimplifying things a bit. We'll we'll see in a bit. Anyway, um, and obviously that would go for both male and female. I mean that's uh, that's pretty obvious. So knight, um, yeah, it's it's not it's not doing it um, whatsoever. Um, that's okay. At least it it does this. Um, basically, what you'd have to do is, uh, yeah, you could create a duplicate, or this would actually have to be the the visible player. Uh, yeah, not a big fan of that. Anyway, um, if we go then to assassin, um, that should have been uh, that should have un unequipped um, everything here, and it doesn't. So we'll need to have a closer look at that. Um, yeah, that's that's definitely that's definitely interesting. Cool. Um, so let's have a look. Why is this not working? Um, oh, because I, I basically equipped the same same thing twice, didn't I? Yes. Okay. Well, let's try that again then. Um, okay. Maybe I, maybe I didn't do it wrong. <laughs> let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, night. Okay, so obviously, uh, yeah, so what am I doing wrong here? There we go. Um, so basic sword on the female as well, and then the chest has to go on the male and female. Sorry about the confusion. There we go. That's better. Um, and yeah, technically we should be good here. Um, so we select um, yeah, male. Class knight, cool. We have the sword. We have the, you know, the chest pauldron thingy. Um, however, the only thing that should still be working, I don't know what happens now. Okay, that's good. Um, the only thing that should still um, be working is this. Now I can see my uh, my error pretty quickly as. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. There we go. So it's just the same error. So it actually is all working. Um, <laughs> I just confused myself for absolutely no reason. So um, male, female, and then um, male, female. There we go. Cool. There we go. Now, obviously, you need to do that save equipment for the female character in a melee class as well, by the way. Um, and yeah, you know, once we select knight now, cool. And then assassin, it will unequip. And that's the that's the thing you will have to do is um, create a set of um, you know 
items basically um, for the assassin as well and for the other classes and then um, you know you call those equip unequip actions and yeah that's that's literally all there is uh, to it so um, just execute these uh, these actions now let's have a look what this will actually look like and I do want to actually add a condition to the ready button because um, right now it's just going to load that scene so I'm going to make this a slightly bit more complex so we're doing to, going to do uh, load um, call conditions um, game creator conditions um, those conditions need some actions as well um, so we're going to add this add this and add this there we go um, then on the button we're going to um, remove all of the actions we're just going to do call conditions now what you can do here is in the else uh, for example you could have a simple UI pop-up um, saying you need to select a class because um, Basically, so class, um, I think the default I uh, created was empty, which is nothing. So it would have to be the opposite, really. Um, so there we go. Um, then here, I keep both. Um, you know, it's uh, you do a set active on a, on a UI element, basically um, saying select a class first. Then... Um, all else, so if this value, uh, if the class value is something else than empty, um, which would be the default value, um, we're going to load the scene, and that's pretty much it. So it can be any other class. We'll start the game. It will save the whole thing. Um, if anything else, we'll uh, we'll create a pop up. Now, yeah, let's actually quickly create that pop up because um, why not? Um, so we have our canvas. Um, let's create a, uh, a small pop-up here. Uh, UI uh, panel, small panel. Uh, there we go. I don't know, 300. That's a bit small. 500 by 300. Let's add some uh, some nice shadow to it. Um, it's not, it's not really about the look. I think that's pretty obvious here. Uh, two minus two. Okay, we have a small shadow that looks nice-ish, sort of. Cool. Um, then uh, on this panel, let's call this panel uh, no class selected, um, just to make sure we know what we're talking about here. Um, I'm already going to add it to the conditions, um, so set active, um, that way we won't forget in a bit. And the panel no class selected will have, uh, you know, this is just for, uh, just for purposes. Um, please select a class first. There we go. Um, we can have overflow, overflow. Want at least to be sharp, it's not going to be pretty, so at least make it sharp then. There we go. Um, 40. Okay, let's make it bold then. There we go. So please select the class first. Um, you can decide what to, uh, what to do next. Um, so uh, one of the ways to do it is um, not have a button and basically um, wherever you press is going to be a button. Um, I like that approach personally. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a UI. Uh, let's do a quick game creator one, UI button, um, which is basically, as you can see, is going to be on top of um, it needs to be a stretch then as well. It's going to be on top of everything. So this is going to literally fill the screen. Um, it's not going to have uh, any value. There we go. So 
Hang on. Let's see. Cool. So yeah, few, uh, screen filling, um, and then on the button is going to uh, close. Uh, no, set active, um, and then this panel, and it's going to disable it. So a bit confusing, but basically, um, let's have a look at how it works. Now, obviously, in order for that to work, you would need to uh, set. Um, the value of that variable of class back to empty, uh, which we can't do in play mode. So I'll uh, take out strike uh, night. There we go. So play. Um, we you know we can mess around, um, which we can't <laughs> apparently. Where did where did I add the button? Didn't I add the button? Uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't a child. There we go. It needs to be a child of panel, no class select. There we go. So, um, you know, we can still make all of our choices. So, male, um, we can customize and, you know, make him all muscly and, and you know, nice, change his hair color. Um, you know, whatever. Then, um, I'm not going to select a class, I'm just going to click ready. And what happens now is we get this warning, please select the class first. And basically there is a button that is literally filling the entire screen. So it doesn't matter where we press um, and it will close that entire panel um, and the text should be gone. Um, then we select the class, night, um, you know, looks all fancy. We have our stats, cool. And then we press ready and then it's actually going to be loading our scene. Um, which is cool. We go to inventory. Um, as you can see now, we have everything double. Um, yeah, the, the other items don't display this, but we actually have two chests. Um, we have two swords. Um, we have two potions. Um, so that's yeah one of the things you won't have to do anymore. You do need to equip them uh, on start. Um, just don't add the items on start anymore. Um, and yeah, you know it's uh, it's it's all functional and cool and stuff. Um, and yeah, there we go. We have our uh, our nice uh, character, um, and all of that is working. And I keep turning off that HUD. I'm not sure why. So cool. Uh, we can close this. We're done with that. Um, that was all nice. Um, and then the only real thing, and that's kind of a setup. And this is going to be really short. I promise. Um, Kind of a setup for the next video um, and to stop turning that off all the time um, is going to be um, creating a um, you know our souls counter pretty much um, so you know you obviously will know what it looks like in uh, in Dark Souls um, it's a really simple counter. Um, we can even literally copy most of this. There we go. Um, let's turn off that inventory. Go back to our HUD. I'm going to add a little panel here again, just um, to make it easier to parent uh, stuff. Uh, there we go. I want it to be at least aligned there and Yeah, something like this seems fine and um, we have some space here the panels not going to have a background whatsoever and uh, Paste as child we have our currency no idea where the currency is, so let's have a look. There we go. It's outside of our. Uh... Perfect. Um, as this is obviously just the exact same information, um, should make it a bit smaller because otherwise it's you know it's just going to take up too much space. There we go, and uh, we can actually just add an image here. black, semi-transparent, um, something like that. 
Um, if we want this all to be white, um, well, we can just make it all white. Um, and yeah, you know, it's it's just literally going to be um, <laughs> displaying that information. Perfect. So same information. Um, obviously, you can change the look if you don't want it to be as big. Um, we don't even need that. Um, I think this is way too big. I'll make it a bit smaller. Um, but yeah, it will be the, the same information. Um, I'm even going to remove this. And I'm going to cheat just to make it a bit smaller. Um, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Uh, just like this. Um, that's fine. And yeah, there we go. Um, again, you know, change the look to whatever you want. Um, still not quite happy with the look. Still think it's too big. Anyway, functionally, it's working. It's still not pretty, but that's okay. Cool. Um, yeah, so we have our uh, our counters being the same. I'm going to go back to preferences and uh, put it back in night uh, just for our testing purposes um, so we don't have to use that character creation screen all the time. Um, and now when we press play, um, we have our um, our source counter, um, we have our inventory, um, sizing is a bit better, you know, aligning it would have made it prettier. Um, and yeah, you know, there we have our, uh, have our inventory. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty cool stuff. It's all functional. Um, and doing it this way at least will make it so that, um, you know, everything relies on that inventory module. Um, so our melee module and everything else, which I do think is, uh, is, is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, maybe stamina is refilling way too fast, but that's okay. Um, you can adjust those values. Cool. So what we're going to do in the next video um, is we're going to set up a couple of our last uh, gameplay mechanics. Um, and these last gameplay mechanics include um, setting on meditation, um, which obviously, you know, the bonfire is uh, kind of a big thing in the Soul series. Um, Elden Ring has something with a different name, but it does exactly the same thing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a big thing. So we'll set that up. Uh, we'll make sure that enemies do the appropriate damage to us. We do the appropriate damage to them. So just fine tune those couple of lost uh, mechanics um, and, um, you know, set up things to, uh, to work properly uh, in the world. And then in the last video, what I'm going to do is kind of just a, a speed run through some world building um, where we're going to... Um, you know, create the world, create the environments, and drop in everything we've created, um, set up some boundaries. It's, it's going to be pretty cool. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.